so today we're on an episode of Talk of the Town. Um, right now we're gonna do a Q and A with the hip hop influencer. She's also A and R, and she works at cinematic <laughs> music. Trophy life. Hey guys. So, <laughs> So on Instagram, we had people submit questions, and we also had questions of our own that we had to ask you. Okay. So we're gonna start. Not none too crazy, right? No. Ah, <laughs> good, good, good. So um, I think we should start with. I'm gonna start with the questions that we had. Um. So how would you describe your day to day life being an A&R? Like, what do you do on a daily? Um, that's a tough question. I feel like no two days are the same. Like, I could be in New York today and be in Wisconsin tomorrow if I need to find an artist or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, it varies. Sometimes I'm in the studio. I could be, I might need to prepare for a show. We've got to rehearse. It, it's a lot of things. I could be doing admin work where I'm clearing beats or mm-hmm. I have to be haggling producers to get the right price for the budget for my artists like it's a lot a lot goes into my day-to-day um process so that leads into this question so a person had asked um where can artists submit their music like how do you go about finding artists um i usually have my email open um anybody can send uh, music to my email it's trophy at cinematic worldwide.com um, but usually I'm, I'm on, I, I try to be as in tune as possible. So you don't even have to send me the shit or I, I actually prefer for other people to tell me about music. So that I know it's actually affecting people in the streets to the point where they, they have to talk about it. Right. So, um, someone I also asked, is a hundred K views or a hundred K streams considered a lot for you? Cause you work with a lot of artists. Um, so for upcoming artists, to them, there might be a lot, but someone like you would probably like, oh, that's not too much. Um, I feel like that's a real hard question to answer, though, because, like... I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I've seen I've seen artists at, like, maybe 7,000 views where I, I said I knew. Person. Yeah, I, I knew it was going to be something, and then I checked back in a month, and the shit is at... Three hundred thousand. So, would you consider um, investing in an artist? Would that be, would that be an artist you're looking at, or they have to market themselves too? How do you go about picking your artist? Oh, <laughs> not too much pressure. Nah, <laughs> listen. If, if I if I feel really good about it, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter yeah, the, the views. Crowd, the yeah, like I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna try to build with you, and I'm gonna try to eat, motivate you to the point where. Um, you have leverage and, and you can you can come in with 300,000 views or a million and you know what I'm saying like work your, way up. work your way up and then we do something that's that's when we take it to the next level okay so um in the industry what do you think are pe- artists biggest downfall uh, there's a couple um but the biggest one like something that like is the main one that you see happens all the time I would say I feel like everyone has different ones but um, um shit maybe just thinking that they got it like you got to be out here so being comfortable yeah don't get comfortable at all like you have to hit the ground running and I, f- I feel like new york artists specifically like they get that little window of um opportunity and they don't know that it closes really fast like it's, there's a lot of pressure on new york artists right now mm-hmm. it's been like that's why it's now opening up because people know now like if you get that opportunity you got to hit the ground running like mm-hmm. don't don't slack at all that's true. that's true so um are you currently managing artists or you're just um um right now i have two artists i've been managing um Roswish and uh jeezy moolah for mm-hmm. for a long time Okay, so speaking of Jeezy Moolah, it was set, the, the people were saying that he's supposed to come home this year. How do you feel about his music and his situation at this point? Uh, see, like, <laughs> I know what the music sounds like, and it sounds pretty amazing to me, so mm-hmm. I can't wait till you guys get to uh, oh, so you get to hear it. Pico is I'm not going to lie, we got, we got some shit, and I'm, I'm very confident that everybody is going to fuck with it, so I'm, 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 I'm eager for him to come home. So... How you feel about him, like, keep coming in and out? Like, I feel like he gets bigger every time he comes out. No lie. But it's he like, does. We don't it's want it's you like, to go in it's, 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 it's a gift but. and a curse. Um, This jail shit, like, I, me specifically, I ain't gonna lie. I think every artist I've signed has had like a running with the law and I don't I don't shy away from that. I don't try to run away from it. Like I it's a part of life. Like 
Yeah, I think all artists kind of have that one. Person. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that, you know, the best artists are the most difficult ones. So it, it, it's going to be a process. Yeah. But yeah I'm, I'm not happy with it, but, you know, it's, it's life. And I, I you know, I, I pray every day that it's not something that we'll, we'll have to deal with ever again. Okay, hopefully. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, so you said y'all have music coming. Mm -hmm. Y'all got music coming out. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming. Casanova did a co-sign, I think, to him. or spoke to him on the phone. Something he did, he posted. Oh, yeah, he posted his picture uh, the other day on Instagram. Um, so that's a good look. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Like, Cassin and Jeezy been rocking been with each him. other. So that's regular. Yeah, he got a he got a lot of good um a, a got a lot of good relationships in the in the industry already. He's fucking with Meek Mill. Meek Mill is fucking with him. Mm -hmm. Shy Glizzy. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? Jay Critch. Uh, Dirk was in the studio with him when he was home. Yeah, he was working with nine people. Yeah, so you know it's it's a, it's a lot of love already there. Okay. So um, being a woman, being a lady, doing what you do, um, what would you say are the pros and cons to this whole industry? Being a woman, because you know I feel like music are dominated by guys. So us, we have to work 10 times harder. So how is that like? This is a terrible question for me. <laughs> Why is that? You feel regular? It's all natural? I ain't gonna lie. Like, I, I grew up thinking I was a boy. <laughs> so, like, the, the, those questions is kind of... It's kind of, it's like... I feel like girls be having crazy stories, like, oh, this one tried to talk to me, or this and that. It's like... That's regular. <laughs> that's regular. That's People regular. supposed to try to talk to you. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, see, you can't ask me. Like, you can't ask me that. No, I, it's, I, it's regular for you. It's regular for me. I try... To, I ain't gonna lie, like, I feel like I haven't really had much women help me. It's, it's more so, like... Guys guys like that um have helped me like you know um elevate but you know girls in the industry they tend to con conflict and stuff like that you don't have much of those though do you no yeah it's kind of like regular no all right so yeah um what's the, what is the hardest part of your job the hardest part <laughs> of my job um i guess the responsibility of knowing that someone's career is in my hands mm. but at the same time, that's it's it's motivation to you know know every day I wake up I have to get shit done like right. So it's motivation every day, and um, so Brooklyn artists are like have serious beef right now. How you feel about all that stuff? Serious beef. Yeah, I feel like I feel like there's a lot of love out here right now. But you know all this. I don't know how to explain this. <laughs> you know what I mean though. Like, you know how everybody's like wooing and showing this person, but this person, like, two, two, and them got the situation. I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's just like they have beef, but they all making music, but people trying to say they don't want to work together because of other situations in the past. Do you feel like that will affect them now? Or do you feel like all that will come to an end one day? Um, I feel, I feel like uh, eventually they'll learn how to coexist. Mm -hmm. I feel like people are seeing now that there's bigger things. Like this, yeah. Then all that shit. Yeah. Exactly. So, last question. What's your ultimate music industry dream? Like, what are you trying to do with this whole thing right now? Um, I mean, I can't see 15 years from now, but I feel like, you know, within the next five, probably lesser than that. Uh, less is a word, right? Less, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe less than that. Um, I'll probably be somebody's head of A and R somewhere at a major label. Probably, I don't know. Would you ever start your own? Yeah, you know, <laughs> when I when I when I get the you know the accolades under my belt, I feel like eventually I will have my own uh, label. Okay. I feel like I have my own shit already. Uh, heard you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that was the Q and A with Trophy Life. We're gonna do. More segments with her. Make sure you like and subscribe to Talk of the Time Talk Show on Instagram and watch us on YouTube at Koei Productions.